Here we are, November 24th, 1862. This is the last battle. Last battle took place here, Hartford. We've advanced down to Hopkinsville. In the meantime, <laughs> Parsons Corps has moved. This guy just won't leave me alone. <laughs> All right, so get you back up there. The 16th Corps is not part of any army. It's basically my uh, reserve training corps. I'm just getting it to where it doesn't it doesn't take days for the men to go from one to the other. So I think the next fight's going to be either here or here. <laughs> Army of Kentucky. Yeah, well, I, I don't think I'm staying there long enough. To build a depot. I don't want any Confederates in my... Get off my property! Okay, oh, and there was big naval battles. So I sent all my blockading uh, fleets home to repair. Okay, you look good. Get back down where you belong. Is the Constitution is all shot up. Come on, Ironside. You're shot up. You're shot up. You're shot up. Yeah, that was a hard fight. I'll show you how hard, how hard it was in a second. The number of Confederate ships I captured tells you something, right? Now, I've renamed every Confederate ship I took before these battles, so, look at that. <laughs> these are all ships captured in November 1862. It was a big fight. Now, it cost them a bunch of ships. But they did get rid of all my blockading fleets because I sent them all home to repair. And the battle line. Oh, these are all my big ships. 74 gun ships, you know. You're okay. You can get back down here too. All right, well, let's see what happens. It's the one in Kentucky, not the one in Ohio. I figured I'd have a fight in Kentucky before, or Ohio before I had a fight here. It's the Sixth Corps versus Parsons Corps. And, well, they're pretty even.
I'd really rather just go into winter quarters so I can advance the game and train. All these little silly battles. You've probably figured out by now that one to one battles are a waste of time. You might win the battle, but the whole idea of fighting a battle is to destroy the other side, and one to one you can't do it because you run out of ammo. You need like three to one in a couple days, and the other side can just run away. I mean, to destroy an enemy army, you got to, like, surround it, cut off its retreat. I always liked Joseph K.F. Mansfield. He finally got himself a core like two or three days before the Battle of Antietam and then he got killed at Antietam. When the CSA Merrimack or the Virginia was tearing up ships at Hampton Roads before the Monitor showed up the, I think it was the Cumberland had surrendered, right? And the Confederates are getting ready to take her. And Mansfield's in charge of an infantry regiment or brigade. And he's firing at the Confederates. And somebody's like, hey, <coughs> the ship surrendered. And Mansfield's like, I know the ship surrendered, but we haven't. <laughs> oh, poor, the poor guy. He got killed because there were Confederate units that wore blue uniforms. When they did, when their clothes wore out, they had Yankee you, you know supply depots. Then wear blue uniforms, and he was like, "Those are stop men. Those are our guys." And those soldiers were like, "No, those are not our guys. They're just Confederates wearing blue." And he, went, he rode his horse over to look, and by the time he figured it out, he was like, I think you're right. His horse got shot, and as he was getting off, he got shot. So, he only lasted a day, or two days, whatever, as a corps commander. Another reason we, the Union didn't clobber the South at Antietam was another guy that was killed at an important moment when he was actually doing stuff. Wow, there's three objectives here. Well, there's the main road that leads right down to him, so I'll stick a brigade here. I'll stick a brigade on the other road. I'll stick a brigade kind of in support. It could be either road. I don't know which one would be best. So, you know, with uh, the artillery. <laughs> Twelve-pound Napoleons. Now the Napoleons, I prefer the rifled guns because they have the range and stuff. But the Napoleons are like giant shotguns. So when the enemy infantry gets close, they're 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 you know they're giant shotguns. I don't want to move you by yourself. 
I want the whole battalion up there. Now this, the bad news is, is that the gunners get shot by the rifles too, but. I don't want the artillery but to think that they're safe because they're in the artillery. <laughs> Franz Siegel. He is another guy who doesn't come down with a very good reputation. But uh, what battle was it? Uh, Pea Ridge? The reason I... He was a he commanded an ar ar infantry army. <laughs> I use him as an artillery commander because it was one good day. <coughs> he took charge of some artillery in a battle and made a difference. So I give him guns because historically he he wasn't a very good army commander, but he seemed to be able to use artillery. Okay. I think it was Pea Ridge. I have, to, I have to investigate that so I get it right. Okay, now these are the rifles. They don't have to be so close. Bull Nelson. He's the guy who was shot in the hotel lobby by a Union general named Jefferson Davis. And Davis was never brought to account for shooting him and was later promoted. And, he, and yes, his name was Jefferson Davis. <laughs> he might have been named after the Confederate president. Because remember, Jefferson Davis had been Secretary of War. Uh, so he was, you know, he, he was a famous man in America already. All right, let's get this thing started. For some reason, the army commander, oh, okay, that's because the army commander was an hour behind. So he wasn't actually, he wasn't actually present to I sure hope I'm being recorded. I can't tell. My headphones aren't telling me anything. See, all he's doing, all the AI is doing is wearing out its troops in bad weather. And, well, 52 degrees ain't so, ain't so bad. But this is just a training exercise for my guys, I hope. I keep saying that, don't I? And then we keep getting into these hard fights. But this battle, we're not outnumbered by so much.
don't think anything's going to change. No. Move you guys just a little bit more to the middle. There you go. All right. Start shooting again. Well, at least they're formed up now. It won't be one brigade at a time.
there's more of them trying to come around the side. They should leave us alone in Kentucky for a while, I hope. Hey, go to winter quarters and you put the men in, you know, semi-permanent buildings rather than living in tents. And they get three meals a day from good with good food, and when the weather's nice, you drill them. So from November till April first, <coughs> the army training should go up, their equipment should go up, and they should be happier, you know. But these battles in the frickin' winter. We'll stop here. I only, I only really want one battle per 
video.